But we were doing better than ever before, and our country was actually coming together. And people that would not necessarily be calling me were calling me to say, unbelievable job. But that got destroyed quickly, and then we rebuilt it, and we handed over a stock market that was higher than before. Think of it. The virus came in. It was higher. And today, it's now lower than it's been in years. And it seems to be heading south. It's a shame. None of this should have happened. It was based on a lot of bad decisions, but none of this should have happened. The war in Ukraine should never have happened. It wouldn't have happened. You could take the five worst presidents in American history, put them together, and they would not have done the damage Joe Biden has done to our nation in less than two short years. It's true. Two years ago, when I was in office, gas, gasoline, the famous, beautiful gasoline, was $1.87 a gallon. And it even hit $1.50, if you remember, at one point. Now gas is $5, $6.07. And it's going up a lot higher than that. And, you know, they're using the strategic reserves, which I topped out. I bought 75 million barrels of oil from the oil companies when we were at an all-time low. I was so proud of it. I said, when are, they gonna, when are these fakers going to write a story that I made a good deal? Because it started to go up to that. But I topped it out. First time in 52 years that the reserves were topped out. And you know what happened? This guy, four weeks ago, said, we're going to start taking it because we want to keep the gasoline low before the election. But after the election, it's going to go up like you've never seen before. It's a shame. I mean, think of it. We topped it out. And that was not for election purposes. That was not for cars. That was for military purposes. We need these strategic reserves. It's not supposed to be used for that reason. Under my leadership, we had American energy independence, and we would soon have been dominant. The United States is now a beggar for energy, and Biden and the Democrat Congress have just passed a massive anti-oil and gas bill to put American energy the hell out of business. Can you believe this? Can you believe it? Let's go buy an electric car that travels for one hour and 49 minutes, and then you can spend four hours on waiting for it to recharge if you can find a charger. Let's do that. Darling, let's take a drive around the country. That's okay, darling, but the most we can go is about an hour and a half. Nah, it's, it's sick what they're doing, sick. We gave you the largest tax cuts and regulation cuts in American history, larger than Ronald Reagan's, bigger than the Reagan tax cuts by a lot. The radical Democrat Congress just passed one of the largest tax hikes in American history. It's the largest tax hike, in my opinion. It'll prove to be pulverizing the middle class. It's happening to your middle class. The Green New Deal, they're spending trillions and trillions on the Green New Deal. It's like taking money and throwing it out the window, and it's causing tremendous inflation. Under the Trump administration, we had the greatest economy in the history of the world with no inflation. Nobody's ever seen like it. That's before the virus came in. Then after it, we got it back. We handed something off that was so good, and they blew it. And they blew it at the border, because all they had to do is leave it alone. We had the strongest border ever. Biden and the Democrat Congress created the worst inflation in more than 50 years, 9.1 percent, and their new so-called Inflation Recession Act. Do you believe it? It's a fake name. You know, everything they do is disinformation. They say things, and they keep saying them, saying them, saying them, and people start either believing them or not believing them. There's not a lot of belief in this place with all these thousands of people going as far as the eye can see. Thank you very much. But it's a fake deal. And it's thrown the economy into a freefall. I built our military and rebuilt our military, including our nuclear capability and the creation of Space Force, which everybody said, no, no, no. But China and Russia were killing us in space, and we did first time in 78 years since Air Force. They surrendered our strength and our, our real, I mean, our heart, our heart in Afghanistan. What happened in Afghanistan, in my opinion, was the greatest humiliation that our country has ever seen. I don't believe we've ever seen humiliation like that, Ted Budd. You're not going to let that happen. I don't think we've ever had humiliation like what happened in Afghanistan. 
And now we have a war between Russia and Ukraine with potentially hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people dying that would never have happened if I was president. It wouldn't have happened. I dealt with Putin. I got along great with Putin. He wouldn't have done it. But I guarantee you, he wouldn't have done it. And he didn't do it for four years. There wasn't soldiers built up on the border, nothing. He wouldn't have done it. Didn't do it. Somebody said, well, he might have done it. I said, well, he didn't do it for four years. And he didn't do it for really five years. During the campaign, we talked about He didn't do it for five years. Two years ago, we had the strongest southern border in our history. Now we have the worst border in the history of our country. And you know what? I believe it's maybe the worst border anywhere in the world and maybe in world history because no third world country would allow to happen to their border. They'd get out there with sticks and stones if they have to. They wouldn't let it happen. They wouldn't let their country be destroyed like is happening to the United States of America. <laughs> Under my leadership, we ended catch and release. We deported record numbers of illegal alien gang members. And we built hundreds of miles of border wall despite two and a half years of Democrat-inspired lawsuits. We won them all. We won every one of them. We completely finished our original plan of the wall. And then I said, let's do some more because we needed some other areas. And we got that almost finished. Three more weeks, he would have had it finished. And then when Texas and Arizona wanted to finish it, they took the wall, which was sitting there waiting to be put up. They took it away. They put it away where Texas and Arizona can't get to it. In other words, they want open borders.